You're listening to episode 277 of the Membership Guys podcast. Today we're talking all about membership site launches and the different types of launches. You might be thinking, hold on, there are different types of launches. Heck yeah, there is. There are six different types of membership site launches and we're going to dive into what each of those are in just a sec. You're listening to the Membership Guys podcast, bringing you proven practical tips and advice from the leading experts on growing a successful membership business each and every week. And now, here's your host, Mike Morrison. All right, let's talk launches. So believe it or not, there are actually six different different types of launches when it comes to membership sites. When you think of a launch, you think of the initial release, bringing your membership to market, but that's not the only type of launch that you can do, or certainly not the only type of launch that gets talked about in the online membership world. So we're going to cover some of these that might come in at different stages of your membership business, and also going to talk about two types of launches that aren't really launches but they're called launches right so hopefully this will clear up some confusion as well for people who you know they'll see launch 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 and just think well hang on how can you just how can you be launching all the time and doing all these launches it's such an overused and sometimes misused word so today's episode is all about clearing up what these different types of launches are what the differences are between them when you might use them and all that sort of stuff so before we do that, I just want to welcome anyone who's listening to the Membership Guys podcast for the very first time. I am your host, Mike Morrison. I'm one half of the Membership Guys, and we are membership site experts dispensing proven practical tips and advice on building, running, growing a successful membership business. We're so glad you found the show. Hopefully you find it useful. And if you are a returning listener, you'll know this is a place you get all the gold about online memberships. And hopefully today's episode will be no different. All right, so let's talk about membership site launches, starting with your main launch, the actual launch launch, where you open the doors to a brand new membership site for the very first time. You release it into the world. You launch it into the world. Typically, when you're talking about a membership site launch, this is what you're talking about, the opening of a brand new membership site. So this is where all of your hard work, all the time spent wrestling with tech and creating content, all the list building efforts, ramping up your wait list, building that anticipation, all of it comes to the fore. All of this comes to a head with your big grand opening, your big launch event, which will usually be a week or two where you're doing lots of promotion, lots of marketing activity to get as many eyeballs as possible on your launch in the hopes that you'll get that influx of initial members that will give you that starting point from which you can then build and build and build and build. It's an exciting time. It's a nerve-wracking time. It's a busy, crazy, chaotic time, but it's also an exciting, amazing time as well because you get to see your baby walk. You get to see all this work you've done pay off. So when we're talking launches, this is what you'll typically think about when someone's talking about their membership launch. It's their their main launch. It's what you're building up to and it's what you use to catapult your business and your membership ahead for months and years to come. The second type of launch I want to talk about is the reopening of a membership which has had its doors closed for the previous six to 12 months. Now, this isn't really a launch in the typical sense. You're not bringing something new to market. You're just starting an enrollment window in the same way a, a school or a college or a university will have a period in which they take in new students and then there's a cutoff. It's an enrollment window. You're just opening the doors again. You're not launching anything. You're not bringing something new to market but it's often referred to as a launch. It's a simple, short word that's used as shorthand, essentially, for a closed-door membership reopening. So again, similar to your main launch when you first launch a brand-new membership, these enrollment windows 
are also going to be accompanied with just a lot of hullabaloo, a lot of singing and dancing, a lot of eyeball generating and attracting activity. So it'll usually coincide with some sort of promo, some sort of offer. They'll maybe, you know, have a, a challenge or a web summit or a series of webinars. Again, just to get as many people assembled for this reopening period in the hopes that a portion of them will join. And typically the driving factor for getting signups during this window is the fact that the window is going to close. So this is where you're utilizing scarcity in order to try and pressure everyone into signing up before the doors closed and then there are no more opportunities to join the membership until the next reopening. Now, we talked about the closed door strategy on past podcast episodes. I'm not going to dive into my personal thoughts on this, the pros and cons, but if you head to themembershipguys.com slash 277, you'll find links to those past episodes where I go a little more into open versus closed, and I talk about some specific circumstances where the closed door model makes sense. But that is the second type of launch. It's not really technically a launch launch, but that's what people refer to it as. So if you ever find yourself confused at the fifth or the sixth time of someone saying that they're launching their membership, this is probably what they're talking about. They don't mean they're launching a new membership, they just mean they're opening the doors for a little bit. Um, So there we go. Is it the right word? Meh, can't think of a more appropriate one that isn't too wordy. So yeah, Okay, that's what it is. Next type of launch is a seed launch. So this is an idea concept that was popularized by Jeff Walker, who's the guy behind Product Launch Formula, which is a a course essentially about launching courses and launching products that has been doing the rounds for, man, it's got to be 10 years now. It's got to be at least 10 to 15 years now. And it's gone through a few different versions now, but the, the core strategy remains largely unchanged. And if you haven't, gone through product launch formula you don't want to invest in uh, purchasing that course which i think is around the two thousand dollar mark if you purchase jeff's book which is called launch then he details some of the uh, main points of this strategy and one of those points is the seed launch now you'll sometimes refer to see this referred to as a founder launch or a pre-sale launch or a founding member launch or something like that but it's a seed launch. There's just other people who have given it their own name um, to make it sound something unique. And again, it's not really a launch. You're not launching anything. You're not bringing anything to market. You're not releasing something. It's a pre-sell. So the seed launch is a pre-sell. It's where you essentially announce your intentions to your audience in a fairly limited capacity. You're not going all out with a big detailed marketing campaign in order to do this pre-sell. You're announcing your intentions. You may be giving them a little bit of a hint, a little bit of a teaser of what you're thinking of doing with your membership site. And you're giving them an opportunity to pay you some money now so that when the membership is ready, they are your first members. And the incentive to essentially back a horse that hasn't even been born yet is the idea that the price you're giving them the option to pre-sell at to pre-buy at is ridiculous value compared to what you'll be charging for the membership so quite often people will uh, make their pre-sell available for a couple of hundred bucks for lifetime access I don't like that lifetime access is a big old kind of worms when it comes to memberships but as a way of getting some instant validation on your idea and also some initial seed funding which is why it's called a seed launch then this is something that can work but there's a few things about this that I just don't like I don't like the idea of just pre-selling on a whim I don't like the idea of just going out and saying hey I'm thinking of doing this thing will you give me some money for it because in the online space in particular people are flighty People are attracted to shiny objects. And there's a real risk that you'll say, oh, wow, this idea of starting a membership, what a great idea. I'd love to start a membership. I want to start a membership that will help golf professionals improve their swing. And so you put out something on Facebook. Hey, guys, I'm starting this amazing golf membership. Hopefully, it should be here in a few months' time. I'm thinking it will have tutorials and a community and coaching. And if you want to be my founder members, then send me a direct message. And then the direct messages say, give me 200 bucks. <laughs> you probably say a little nicer, a little smarter than that, but that's essentially what you're doing. But in a couple of weeks' time, there's a real chance that another shiny object has caught your attention. Or maybe you get a certain way into the process and you think, man, this is going to be harder than I think. 
there's a lot more moving parts or I'm not going to be able to create all the content that I talked about or I said that we were going to have um, you know a community but I've decided I don't really want one then what do you do then you can give them the money back which generally the advice around this kind of seed launch is you actually put the money off to one side so that if you change your mind you can give it back but also it's just a real cruddy way of doing business like the idea that you might make this big proclamation and then two weeks later you've changed your mind and so you have to go back to these people who are in your network and say yeah no that thing that i was going to do i'm not doing anymore here's your money back but you might be interested in my next thing so it's it can be a little bit hit and miss what we also see happen a lot is people will do this seed launch and because it's a big ask because you're getting people to pay you for the initial acorn of an idea in the hopes that it'll actually bear fruit if it ever even grows into a tree it's a big big ask right and so you're probably going to get fewer people take you up on that than you would if you just waited until you were a few steps further in the process until you'd actually fleshed out what your idea was going to look like what sort of features it would have what the actual time frame for getting this thing launched is but the thinking behind a seed launch is that you do this before any of that stuff you do the pre-sell before you even start putting some meat on the bones of your very basic initial concept and so because it's that hard sell what you will sometimes find is people will go out there they'll try to pre-sell they'll try to do the seed launch they get a muted response there's not that many people turn around and say yes i'm up for this here's some money and then they're discouraged by that or they take that as a sign that people just aren't interested in their plans and so they abandon them and they move on to something else whereas actually had they just waited a little bit had they just taken a few steps in the journey before they go out there and start trying to sell it then maybe they'd have a little more to talk about maybe they'd have a clearer concept maybe they have more to show people screenshots some initial concepts an idea of what your first two or three courses might be a specific time frame in mind all that sort of stuff that's going to make it an easier sell so i'm not going to rant on about this too much again if you want more details on a seed launch then check out jeff walker's launch and similarly if you heard some of the other names that people refer to the seed launch concept as founder launch pre-sell launch that sort of thing then again they are all seed launches and you'll find those details in jeff's book but as i said i'm not the biggest fan of the seed launch i think it's selling or it's asking people for money and for backing too early in the process for me if you want that validation and you want that little injection of revenue that's going to help you grease the wheels on getting your membership out there then the better approach is a pilot program so this is essentially an mvp minimum viable product which is something that has more meat on the bones that has some tangible qualities to it an actual product you can deliver to people that isn't your final product it's maybe a lighter almost watered down version of what you ultimately would want your main membership to be however it's a sign of what to come and it's enough to kick off a pilot program so again this can be something where you reach out to your closer networks to some of your past clients to people on your wait list to connections and you offer them the option of joining up your mvp membership and they can be members of that as you're putting all the other bells and whistles in place so again this is kind of somewhere between the seed launch and the main launch where you're still essentially pre-selling you're still selling before the product itself is fully created maybe before the content creation has started but you've actually got enough of a tangible product to compel people to sign up to justify going out there and saying i have this thing it's very early stage this is what it's going to become you can see the beginnings of it and you can become a member right now and lock in that founding price so that when it's fully launched you're laughing because you got in at this ridiculous ridiculous rate as part of our pilot program so i've done a whole episode about the benefits of offering an mvp definitely check that out at the membership guys.com 277 you'll find the links to that 
And the particular approach, the particular strategy that we tend to advocate for this sort of pilot program is something called the Lean Live Launch. So you'll find a video that actually goes more in detail on what the Lean Live Launch is. Again, over at themeasureguys.com slash 277. But essentially, it combines a real lean, light tech setup. So not overdoing it on the tech side of things. Because again, you know, you can get the tech for a membership up and running within two hours at the very, very most, if you keep it simple. Combining that with making all of your content delivery live. So rather than locking yourself away in your office and recording 20 courses, instead, all your initial content you deliver to people live. So if you've got a six module course, then don't record it all up front. Instead, week one in your membership, you deliver module one live as a live training, and then you take those recordings and edit them. Maybe week two or maybe month two, you deliver the second module. Again, do it live rather than pre-recording it, and then you edit those up. And it just enables you to get an MVP version of your membership site up and running quicker without the need to have spent countless hours creating all your content in advance or really kind of wrestling with more complicated tech setup. So again, if you head to the membership guys com slash 277 then we've got a little video embedded on that page as well where we talk a bit more about the lean live launch strategy or you can find it over on our youtube channel youtube.com slash the membership guys so that's the fourth type of launch the pilot program this is where you launch an mvp version of your membership and you get some of those founder members those initial members enrolled in that as you're putting all the other pieces of the puzzle in place the next type of launch is a beta launch. So this is actually a beta test. It's when you take your final finished membership site, but before you open the doors to the public, you do a small private beta test where you invite a select number of people to come and join your membership site with the express purpose of kicking the tires, of testing it out, of putting it through its paces, of making sure everything works, of making sure that if everyone logs on at the same time, the server doesn't crash, of giving you feedback on how easy it is to use or potential problems. So this beta test is designed to help you to iron out any wrinkles to ensure that your membership is in the perfect state or as close to perfect as you can get it before you open the doors, just to give you a chance to fix any mistakes or problems that maybe have slipped past your notice before you open the floodgates and you get everyone joining. So again, this kind of beta launch, you could potentially go to the people on your wait list, or you go to, again, past customers, people who are a little closer to you, but you're not publicly promoting it. You're not inviting all and sundry to come and join the membership because it's not about giving people early access. It's not about even pre-selling or getting some revenue going. It's about testing. So the beta launch, again, it can be extremely useful for helping you to ensure that you are in absolute top shape or as close as you can get to top shape before you open the doors to your membership and has the great side effect of also ensuring that you already have people there in your community. So there's already discussions, there's already conversations and activity going on. So when your first members come from your public launch, they're joining somewhere that's already active, that's already got some chat going on, that's already got an engaged group of initial members in place to welcome them. So that kind of beta launch can pay dividends. Again, it's not about making money. And indeed, you might actually reward the people who come and test your site with free membership, either for life or for the first year, as a thank you for them helping you to get everything ready for your big public launch. Final launch we want to talk about is a soft launch. So this is something that you would do if you are planning on having your membership open all of the time. So again, the vast majority of successful memberships in the world are open all the time. That's kind of the standard. That's the normal way of running a membership or indeed running a business. You've got a product to sell, you put it on sale. You make it available for people to buy when they need it and when they're ready to buy. However, if you are completely new to doing business online or to running any sort of business like a membership and you have any concerns about whether this is something you're going to be able to sustain long term or maybe you are planning on, I don't know, offering a certain level of content or a certain type of feature, 
but you're not sure how that's going to play out in real terms. And perhaps you're a little concerned, a little worried about the big public launch. Because, of course, when you open the doors to everyone and then you keep the doors open and members keep coming and all that sort of stuff, the more members you get, the harder it is to then change your mind on things later on. And I don't mean change your mind on what your membership offers because your membership's always going to revolve and change. But I mean change your mind on whether you want to run a membership at all or whether you want to have your membership always open maybe it actually would be better suited to having a closed door model or maybe you're starting your membership as a side project and the long-term goal is for it to become your main revenue source however for the next few months you can't prioritize your membership full-time and so you know there needs to kind of be a limit so if there's any of that sort of stuff going on then you might consider what's called a soft launch. So this is where you do your public launch. Maybe you don't go out all guns blazing on the promotion, but you do open to the public and you make enrollment available for a week or two in the same way you would do with your uh, launch promotion or launch offer when you're bringing the new membership to market. But at the end of that window, you close your doors. Now you're not closing your doors because your model is to open, close, open, close. You're just closing the doors once and you'll keep those doors closed for a few months where you find your feet, where you have that closer relationship with that initial smaller batch of members without needing to, you know, deal with new members coming in. Maybe you have an onboarding process that requires a a heavy personal touch or maybe the plan is to kind of automate some of the, the onboarding or some of the serving of your new members, but you're not able to do that just yet. All those kind of things, things where you might benefit from just focusing on that small initial intake of members, a soft launch can help you with that. So you do your public launch, you then close the doors, you keep them closed for a few months while you find your feet, while you iron out a few different things, while you get feedback from your members and you see what they're using, you maybe see what kind of new things that they say that they would like, you get a good idea about how long they're likely to stay, making sure that people don't drop off immediately after their first month, all that sort of stuff. It's kind of like a a practice run. And then... After that initial three or even six month period, that's when you open the doors for good. So this is why you call it a soft launch because you are launching, but it's not your one big new product to market, open for everyone kind of launch. It's somewhere in between. It's a launch that's a little softer and that is designed to help you ease into your role as a membership site owner and help your membership find its feet and build that initial momentum that will get you to a place where you'll be in a better position when you do open to the public. Not everyone will need to do this. This is kind of redundant for a lot of memberships where if you've got everything ready, you want to hit the ground running, do your big launch and then drive it forward from there. But if you know you need a little bit of a softer entry into the world of running an online membership, then a soft launch can work for you. So let's just recap those six different types of membership launches. The first, the obvious, the most common, the thing people mean when they talk about launching a membership, it's your main launch of a brand new membership. You're opening the doors for the very first time. You're bringing your membership to market. This is the main event. The next type of launch, not really a launch, it's a reopening of a closed door membership where you open the doors for a limited period of time and then you close them again. Launch isn't the right word for it, it's not the best word for it, but it'll do, it's what everyone calls them, that's just the way it is. Next type of launch is a seed launch. This goes by many names, but essentially it's a pre-sell. It's not an actual launch. You don't have a product to sell. You're not bringing anything to market. You're not releasing anything. You're just getting people to buy in to a nugget of an idea as a way of getting some seed money and also of validating that there's at least one person out there who might like what you've got to sell. I'm not a huge fan. We see it going wrong more than we see it going right, but some people do them. Some people like them more than we do. I'm not a huge fan. If you want to validate your idea and get some initial revenue, then the fourth type of launch is my preferred way of doing it. And that's a pilot program launch where you essentially launch a slimmed down, almost prototype version of your membership site as a minimum viable product. 
I prefer that over something like a seed launch and the particular approach that we advocate for your pilot program is something we call the Lean Live Launch Strategy. Again, you'll find it on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the membership guys or over at the membership guys.com slash 277. You'll see a little video where I dive into that a bit more. Launch type number five is a beta launch, a beta test. Again, this isn't about marketing a new product release. This is about getting it ready, getting it tested, putting it through its paces. It's a type of launch, but it's a back-end launch. It's a behind-closed-doors launch. And if used in that way, it can really be instrumental to make sure that you're putting yourself in the best situation before you open the doors publicly. And then the final type of launch is a soft launch. If you know that you need to take baby steps into the world of running an online membership, it might be beneficial to have a low-key public launch initially, close the doors down just to enable you to settle into your role as a new membership owner, to gather data, gather feedback, to iron everything out. And then a few months down the line, you open the doors to everyone, you do a proper big launch, and you're in a better position for it. So before you listen to this episode, good chance is you probably didn't realize there were multiple different types of membership site launches, but now you know six different types of launches. Hopefully this has been informative useful hopefully it's maybe given you an idea or it's helped you make a decision if you were thinking of doing one of these seed launches but it didn't sit quite right with you then hopefully i've been able to help you in that decision too that is it from me thanks as always for spending some time with me today i'll be back again next week with another installment of the membership guys podcast